Good gracious, my dude. All right, we got one video. It's a short one uh, by Sunny B2 about an old familiar name you guys might know from YouTube. Uh, I'm not going to say it because I don't want to get, you know, uh, I don't want YouTube to, to, to give me the, old, the good old, uh, 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 you know, uh, B-A-N, if you know what I'm saying. Nika Higa hasn't uploaded a video since April 2020, so we're going to provide a full-length explanation for his disappearance, which can only be understood if you first realize that the channel included another person by the name of Sean Fujiyoshi. Sean was there for all of the channel's most notable early content, namely how to be emo, how to be gangster, and how to be ninja, with these three videos acting as a foundation for Nika Higa to become YouTube's most subscribed channel for 677 nice. days between August 2009 and June 2011. Although this would also be the point at which Ryan showed early signs that the channel might not last forever, coming specifically during his celebration of 5 million subscribers. Ryan stated that producing each skin Chaos yeah, says, though legit, exposing the scams could pose a risk to his- Oh, absolutely it could. That's why I got so much respect for the dude. That's scary. It was significantly more difficult than his audience might realize, which was followed by him comedically showing his production company, which featured him as the writer, filmer, magician, and editor, perhaps implying that he was overwhelmed by the workload. To fix this problem, Ryan created the Ryan Higa Production Company, or the RHPC for short, which on top of Sean introduced another five people to help out with the channel. However, while this reduced the workload per person, it increased the scale and complexity of the business, which wasn't the only thing making Ryan's life difficult. At a later date, Ryan explained that he'd hit a point where he was too famous to live a normal life. With that amount of people watching, there's always bound to be some sick people. Like once in my home in Hawaii, people came and spray painted Tihi on my parents' house while we were in it. That's the scary part. People tried to come up to my other house and they tried to come to my windows and take pictures of us through the windows. Stuff like that, it makes you think a lot. You do have to live with it. Which will be the first example of many to come where Ryan would express the downside of being a famous YouTuber. I can totally understand that. And not only that, but it, it starts to get into the point, like, because my, my doggo's a big, big boy. So it's kind of like, if somebody tries to get into, like, someone's house where they have, like, an attack doggo, it's like, ooh, like, that becomes a whole other situation you have to think about now, dude. Despite this, he and his team continued to pump out skits for the channel, although Ryan made it obvious that he already thought his best days were in the past. For example, in May 2017, he'd upload a video titled Life of a YouTuber, in which Ryan outlined the different stages that every creator goes through, with stage 5 implying that he was no longer enjoying making the videos. Ryan would go on to explain- It, it does- it, it, there, I feel like, in, and that's for anything, there does come a certain point where- the 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 entertainment that you feel for something starts to go from just fun to business you get me and 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 that's something that's like goodness i hope i hope i don't get to that point that that's that's kind of why i like doing just this simple stuff streaming specifically not necessarily as much content creation though yes we have a secondary channel where content creation is going to be a thing i do want to create more content and start to more do more of that uh but it's 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 a little like that's one of those things that you have to really think about is because you really like at what point do you start to focus more on the views as opposed to how much fun you're having creating the content you get me that the final stage if in that makes YouTuber's any sense. career was to write a book, and the point of the video in the first place was to announce that he'd written a book. Writing a book is a very important stage in a YouTuber's career. It means that I am in uh, one of the final stages of my YouTube career. However, while these hints seem to imply that Ryan was about to retire from YouTube, Nah, bro, you can write a book whenever. Amazon Amazon will, will upload it. I'm, I'm working on a book right now. Well, it's, it's not intended to be a book. I'm actually working and writing a... Uh, a uh, uh an anime uh that's that's you know i'm gonna have to find an artist see someone who i can collaborate with on but i i'm, I'm sort of doing just the lore the behind the scenes stuff so not the actual meat and potatoes quite yet it's supposed to be like i'm I'm trying to make like a a sort of lord of the ring style like massive massive history of the entire world events and then you get to experience a, a, a part like a, a, a small chapter in the life of, of in the history of this uh this world uh and, and I'll, i i don't want to get too much into it because i'm still working on that quite a bit and to be frank it would take an entire video for me to go over what i have as of yet dude I, i've got page after page of history like that's written down so i will get i'll get maybe someday i'll start to release some of that info or some of that stuff who knows youtube the uploads didn't slow down and continued full 
steam ahead for well over a year. That would be until the 2nd of September 2018, when Nigahiga uploaded a video simply titled Goodbye Sean. As suggested by the title, Sean announced that he was leaving RHPC as he landed a job in the engineering sector and was moving to a nice. different state altogether. I'll be moving to California with my girlfriend and yeah, this might Oh, that's great for well, Sean! many of the comments implied that this would have a major impact on the channel's future, nobody could have predicted the impact that it would have on Ryan himself. Sean's departure seemed to suggest to Ryan that perhaps it was time to move away from these silly YouTube skits and pursue something a little more age appropriate. His childhood friend who was a year younger than him was making big life changes while Ryan was stuck doing the exact same thing that he had been for the last 10 years. I did the same thing every day for years. If you do it for a while, you kind of get to the same place, I think. At a minimum, it seemed to suggest to Ryan that there was better opportunities outside of YouTube because as highlighted by this comment, the channel was never the same since Sean left. Only six videos after Sean announced that he was leaving, Ryan would upload a new video titled If I Quit YouTube, in which he'd begin by stating that he was bored of making videos. I'm gonna be completely like I, and this is coming from someone who's not freaking huge on YouTube or anything like that. But it's something that I've noticed a lot with some of the a lot of the YouTubers that I used to watch, still watch, or or, or haven't watched in a while. It, it, there's one thing that tends to always drop your viewership and tends to bring down your channel, and that's complaining <laughs> about being a YouTuber. Because it, you have to understand, to everyone else watching your content, looking at you as the number one spot of YouTube, they they are sort of looking at it from the angle of like that's what i want to do i wish i could be at that level i want to be that top youtuber so when when you start complaining about what the view is like at the top people tend not to freaking have a good time with that bro they tend they tend to get really freaking uh uh annoyed in, in in essence and and so right off the bat i'm not saying you don't have a right to to complain either absolutely i can only imagine every job at a certain point you're gonna be like oh dude i'm doing the same thing every single day but that's kind of like that's why you need to be able to stretch out and do what you want to do on your channel on your stream and really sort of you know, you have to keep yourself entertained just as much as you keep uh, the audience entertained. So I can understand him absolutely. I'm just saying that's what, what I've noticed from a lot of people. They don't people do people the audience and people do not take kindly to you complaining about the view from the top of the mountain. You get me? Because that's they're trying to get up there, and they don't they don't want you to they don't want you to destroy the illusion. I guess videos over the past year i really have been considering quitting youtube it's not that i don't want to do youtube but i just wasn't having fun making youtube videos anymore and as a result he planned on switching up the content there's gonna be changes on this channel and i know that a lot of you praise me and respect me for not changing my content over the years but this is something i have to do for myself ryan expanded on this in a later live stream during which he implied that he was no longer challenged by the skits he was making there's nothing that i really feel like oh this is going to be different if i do it. it would have to be something more challenging before going on a state that he had even grown tired with the sound of his own voice. Watching yourself over and over and over and listening to yourself, it actually used to make me mad. It's a weird thing to understand until you do it over and over and over. But I would literally be like in my head, I'd be like, shut up, dude, shut up! Because you hear and see the same shit over and over and over. It was like frustrating because I would self-critique too much. Having lost the love for his original type of content, Ryan made a quick migration to a podcasting series named Off The Pill, stating that the series was the only alternative to quitting altogether. Together. In the podcast, everyone said don't put it on your channel, but I was just like so over it at that point. Make what I want to make, or essentially quit. In a different video, Ryan I've noticed that the play the the channels that successfully pull stuff like this off are the channels that slowly drip feed the new content along with the old content as they sort of transition past. Like you can't you can't just one day to the other switch up like that. And again, if you are going to have a podcast in this specific situation, I would suggest again not bringing that negativity of of your other content to the podcast cuz cuz now you're not pleasing anyone, are you? The people that that hate your new content are going to the new content just to be reminded about how you don't want to do the old content. And the people who like like the new content uh, same thing, they're going to watch your new content because they want to see something new, but you're still talking about the old content. 
Ryan promised to continue uploading skits in between each podcast episode, and while he would abide by this promise in the beginning, the podcast eventually became the dominant type of content on the channel, presumably because it was significantly easier to make. In late 2019, Nigahiga uploaded 13 podcasts in a row without any other type of video, prompting an upload titled Why I Haven't Been Posting, in which he'd explained that his original type of content no longer suited the current YouTube meta. I don't even know when exactly it started to happen, but I was getting a little frustrated with YouTube and getting really just bitter, I guess, with how what, what YouTube had become. Ryan then added in a live stream that he was almost never happy while making skits. Can you say you're happy about your life? I can't say that the whole time during my YouTube career I was, even in, in its peak, and that's probably when people thought I was the happiest. Adding in an Anthony Padilla interview that he was always burnt out. How have you prevented yourself from feeling YouTube burnout? I didn't. <laughs> I'll admit that I was burnt out for like yeah. years. Before implying on more than one occasion that becoming successful did almost nothing for his own personal fulfillment. Finding fame and money doesn't bring happiness at all. But you don't really know until you really go through it. Ryan then made it obvious that as someone who made everybody I can agree to this. I can agree to that fame and money does not bring genuine happiness. Uh, but again, as much as I can agree with that, if 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 that's all the audience is hearing is you complaining about the your the fame and money that you have tends not to go over well and that's not that's not speaking bad about him 100% it's it, it, you know he he deserves like that's how he feels that's what's happening burnout's a real thing but people just don't again people don't like to hear complaints from the top of the mountain like it just it drives them away it doesn't it cuz cuz they they want they want to achieve that goal so to hear somebody up there they start to get it in their head that this person doesn't appreciate what they have yada yada that kind of stuff and it's like hey, you know i i genuinely do hope that 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 uh he he's living a happier life in general but you know eh. You know, that's all I really can say on the topic honestly i i i wouldn't know until i get there but all i can say is that no matter how much money you have in your pocket, you need to learn how to be happy without having any money in your pocket first. Because you're just, you're just, if you, once you have money, all you're going to do is spend it. It's going to come and go just as easy. And, and, and I can understand where he's coming from uh, uh, on that angle, from someone who's gone from having plenty of cash to someone who's now, you know, pretty much just going check to check. You know, right now, I'm, I'm pretty much at the uh, the quote-unquote lowest I've been in quite some time, uh, uh, where I just have a very small part-time job and doing this. I am going to be soon getting back into a part-time job, uh, uh, like well, another part-time job, you know, where I actually get decent amount of money and all that. Uh, but it, it's, 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 it's definitely something that... Uh, I feel like everyone should should, at the very least, learn how to genuinely appreciate life and everything around them when you like that that's free that's just that you don't need to be rich that you don't need to work so hard that you don't need to stress about you know and once once you have that the money will just be the cherry on top uh chaos says so many streamers seem to have the same issue being tired of the content they got popular for them trying to chase the meta and that's another problem is that chasing the meta is is like it's you no know, because because of course youtubers have fomo you know they have that fear of missing out and I'll be honest with you, I feel like that's why, that's the reason why it was so hard for me to get into st uh, streaming and YouTube again, why I got on, got off, got back on, got off, since 2015, a lot of people don't know, I've been doing YouTube since 2015, and I, I, I did it for a long time, did it for like two years, got off, did it for a long time again, got off again, now I'm doing the VTuber thing, but the, the difference is... I'm not chasing some meta. I'm not trying to make a fancy video. Yes, I'm working on a script for Anime Attic. Yes, I'm writing a book. Yes, I'm doing a bunch of stuff. But I'm doing it at my pace when I feel like making the content, when I'm happy with it, when I'm genuinely enjoying creating that content. Until then, I'm just streaming because I have fun streaming. I have fun watching YouTube videos. I have fun playing games with you guys. I have fun getting to talk to all these people from Poland, people from Brazil, people from Germany, all kinds of amazing people. All of you guys are so awesome to speak to, and I enjoy it. I have fun doing it. I love it. It is the highlight of my week every single time I get on the stream. So it's like, that's why it becomes, it, it, it's this one thing where if you want to become a huge VTuber, uh, not VTuber, well, yeah, VTuber too, but if you want to become huge on YouTube, you have to chase the meta. But you're gonna be sacrificing that sort of creative liberty that you get from just doing whatever you feel like doing. Of course, I know it's important for me, like, and, and, and so this kind of, uh, 
relates to me in the sense of like every single time I pick a video game to play, it's like, okay, do I want to chase the meta? Because if I wanted to chase the meta right now, I'd do what every single other VTuber is doing. I'd be playing Apex Legends. I'll be playing, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Warzone. I'll be playing, you know, all those games. See, Minecraft is still big right now. It's still huge on Twitch. But no, I freaking, I if there's a game that I really like and it's it, it follows the meta, awesome. Honkai Star Rail. I genuinely enjoy that game. I love old, old, like, RPGs like that, you know? It's fun, it's simple, it's cool, waifus, uh, you know? So I love it, and it's great because it lines up with some meta, but it also uh, allows me to have fun making the content. But if if people tell me, oh, you, you shouldn't watch reaction videos at the beginning of your streams, it's like, well, I don't want to do that. When, when at the very beginning of my stream, I want to watch content that is entertaining to me, makes me laugh, gets me in the mood for the day. Like, that's what I want to do. And and it might not be meta. Some people don't like it. Some people prefer just shut up and get into the gameplay. But that's not that, that I don't have fun with that. So I'm, I'm going to do this, you know. And that's why I, I feel like it's important to make sure that, yes, while you do want to chase the meta, you also need to make sure you're enjoying what you're doing. Otherwise, if it's, you know, that's why. And I told I've said this many times on the channel. If I'm not having fun, I'm not going to do it. Chaos, you were actually a, a, a perfect example. Of that. I've told you many times, dude. As soon as it stops becoming fun, I'm not going to do it anymore. As soon as it stops becoming fun, I'm not going to do it. That's why I'm just going to do what I what I find fun, what I find entertaining. You laugh at the expense of his own mental health. He related and I, and to I, the life and of... I, and I hope that will help me avoid this exact situation. Robin Williams. The Robin Williams incident where, like, you can be the funniest, most respected, famous, loved, and no one knows what you're going through. So how is his life better than the guy who's working a 9 to 5 right now and is still has a family? That's a better life. Before adding that becoming so successful in his 20s might have been a negative, as he didn't know what else to look forward to. Damn, if this is my goal and I reach this goal and I'm still unhappy then what am i doing like what else is there it was obvious that ryan was feeling a little lost which began to reflect in the madness of his video uploads as his channel became a mix of skits podcasts and advertisements for his new energy drink guys i released my own energy drink isn't this crazy this persisted until the 41st episode of off the pill at which point ryan disappeared altogether before returning three months later by uploading a video titled my midlife crisis so this is definitely the longest break i've ever taken from not posting videos on this channel in my entire YouTube career. Ryan began the video by explaining that he was going through a breakup. I don't usually talk about relationship stuff here on YouTube. I am no longer dating anyone. I'm not dating Mrs. Che anymore. Before stating that he wanted to step back and figure out exactly what to do with his life. The real reason why I had to take this break was because I needed to reflect on my own life. I'm freaking old, man. I mean, I just realized that I'm going to be 30. Instead, Ryan uploaded one final video on Hey, bro, why you gotta say it like that, though? Why you gotta say it like that? I'm 27, bro. You don't think... <laughs> why are you making me feel like that? On the 25th of April I don't 2020, like this. before going silent. I don't like this. Over on Twitch, Ryan explained that the pandemic made it almost impossible to film anything for YouTube. I can't film with the team. I was already burnt out of YouTube. We didn't know how long it was going to last, the freaking lockdowns and stuff. And as a result, he'd become a full-time streamer, which he enjoyed significantly more. But by that time, I already started liking streaming. I haven't felt that from anything YouTube-related in a long time. Years. Ryan went on to explain that this was the ideal scenario, as it meant he got to choose when the channel came to an end. The only time it really did end is when I chose to stop posting during COVID. We could have kept going. It just, I didn't want to. And I think that's, to me, that was the best way to go out on my own terms versus like, oh, I can't do it. No one's watching. And given his average viewership on Twitch of well over a thousand people, his migration to the live streaming nice. service might have been a good decision. Plus, this isn't to say that he isn't coming back. Does that mean you're done with YouTube? Not necessarily. I mean, I still, like I said, there's been some days where I came really close to just like starting to film again. When I Asked, will you go back to YouTube? Ryan simply stated, I don't know. I have had like more interest in doing creative stuff again. Yet he'd need to take a significant break from Twitch in order to do so. I would have to take a Twitch break for sure. There's no way I could be doing this, keeping up the schedule. Ryan then stated that in order to return, he'd need to find an idea that he felt extremely passionate about. But it has to be something I really care about. I would have to enjoy doing everything by myself. You'd have to enjoy doing every process and I don't, I don't enjoy doing all of it. I don't want to go and pull footage. You know, I've been through all that already and even then he expressed see that's exactly what i'm saying my dude and and i feel and, and for anyone else out there who's just trying to get into the, the the scene right now i feel like that's something that you we we really have to pay attention to if because we need to go in with the mindset sort of learn from these 
veterans of YouTube, you know, what, what, what some, what certain pitfalls you can run into, you get me? So that's why I'm trying to avoid a lot of that stuff. Concern about how any new video might perform given the channel's inactivity. It would be lower because I've been so inactive. So based on the algorithm, the first video I upload would get more views. The second one would probably get less. Although just a few days ago, Sean Fujiyoshi uploaded an image to his Twitter showing that the entire RHPC gang were having a reunion. So there could be some new content just around the corner. That's nice, my dude. Well, I'm glad that he, he was able to sort of stop himself before he had such a like a really bad break or anything like that. It, it, it's good that he went into something that he genuinely enjoys doing. Uh, uh, and it's sort of like, you know, and, and, and it's a learning experience for everyone. I think we can all take that as an example. I genuinely hope nothing but the best for him, my dude. It, it, you know, he, he, he made it. He made it to the top. What more can we ask for, you know, at the same time, though, uh, he needs to, he needs to stop being so hard on himself, my dude. He needs to be okay with what he's doing. You don't gotta, you don't gotta do nothing. You don't owe nobody nothing, my dude. As long as you're enjoying it, that's all that matters, my dude. I'm gonna drop a like right here. Thank you.